So the, the, first, the first part of 6.1 is pretty easy, operations with functions. We're going to be dealing a lot with function notation. And so the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to be given as an example two functions, f of x, which is uh, written x squared plus 5x minus 2, g of x equals 3x minus 2, and this notation over here means that you're going to add f and g. This one means you're going to subtract g from f, and this one means you're going to multiply. It's really important to, to note that later on in this uh, section, there's going to be another symbol that looks similar to this, but it's going to be an open circle. So the closed dot meaning multiply the way we know multiply. Um, and so we're not going to really look at division in this section. Uh, so when you get to your homework, there's problems that are going to ask you to do addition, um, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We're going to ignore the division. Okay. So it, it is as simple as it seems. In order to find f plus g, you just have to take x squared plus 5x minus 2 and add it to 3x minus 2. So go ahead and do that, please. So here's what the first one would look like. We just take x squared plus 5x minus 2, and we're going to add it to 3x minus 2. Now, there's really nothing in front of this set of parentheses or this one, so the parentheses in this problem really don't serve us much purpose other than to show that there's two groups there. So I can just drop, okay, since there's no distribution. And then I just need to combine like terms. So I have some like terms here. And I have some there. Don't lose those signs. The sign directly to the left is what goes with it. So when I combine 5x and 3x, what do I get? And then minus 2 and minus 2? Minus 4, okay? So it's simple as that. f plus g of x means add the functions together, and you get a new function, x squared plus 8x minus 4. All right? How many had that? Great. All right, give number 2 a shot. It is also pretty straightforward. Just have to be careful with one part. All right, so here you have to be careful that minus. Uh, make sure that you distribute that minus, which means, and, and after going through all that division in Chapter 5, when we subtract a group, that means all signs need to change. So this ends up being minus 3x plus 2. Again, I have my like terms, 5x minus 3x, so we've changed that up a little bit, and then minus 2 plus 2. So that gets changed up a little bit too. All right, so my final answer should be x squared plus 2x. The constants cancel out. If you put the plus 0, that's fine, but you don't need it. How many had that one right? Very good. So the last one is just a straight multiplication problem. And so here we've got a trinomial times a binomial. So when I have three things times two things, how many things do I end up with initially? Six things, correct. So go ahead and do that and then see if it can simplify down to less than six terms. So we just distribute. Um, so what I did was x squared times 3x, that's 3x cubed, x squared times minus 2, minus 2x two squared. 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. Minus 2 times six, uh, times 3x is minus 6. Minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4. Any like terms here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got the x squared. I have the x's. So, final answer. 3x to the third plus 13x squared minus 16x plus 4. How many got that right? Piece of cake, right? That's the first part of 6-1. That's the easy part of 6-1. Like I said... In your homework, you're going to have some problems like this. They're going to give you F and G or G and H or whatever the names of the functions are. And they're going to ask you to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I've written in the directions of your assignment to ignore the division. We're not going to worry about the division. All right? 
The second part of this lesson is composite functions. And a composite function is made by using one function as the input value for the other function. So uh, we have evaluated functions in many different ways already this year, where we've found like f of two and then we plug two in for x everywhere. A composite function now, instead of plugging a number in or just one single variable in, we're gonna plug an entire other function in as the input value. And that's, we call that a composite function. There's some new notation, and when I talked about multiplication a little while ago, the closed dot versus a open circle, we're gonna, you're gonna see that in a second. So here's some notation. These two things mean the same thing. So here's what I'm talking about, the open circle. This means uh, f of g of x. This is how you say it. f of g of x. It could also be written like this. All right. These two things mean the exact same thing. This is saying the g of x is the input value into f. And the order here matters when you see this kind of notation, that g is the input value. And that's what it says. G of x is the input value into f, yes. So those of you guys looking, wondering about some of the memes on the wall up there, yeah, I had some kids make some. Because a lot of times people look at this and of course, what do they think? Fog. Fog, okay. So I had a student made a meme about that. That is Oops. still on the wall. Cassidy Marino, she made that. You guys know Andrew, Andrew's older sister. She made that meme. And then the pineapple on pizza one, I found that somewhere. I didn't look for it, it just popped up. Then we got another one, and we'll get to that one in a minute. Because sometimes, instead of having G as the input value, we can reverse the order. All right? And so you could just flip it all around. And so now f becomes the input value, g of f of x. Or some people look at this and say Goff. And so uh, Will Springer made the Jared Goff one when he played for the Rams and was drafted by the Rams. Now, he, of course, he's a Detroit Lion. So, but, so that's where those came from. All it means is what you plug in, which one you plug in to which one changes the order. Okay. So here the input value is F. Here the input value is G. We're inserting into F. Here we're inserting into G for an example. Here's the example that we're going to go through. Okay, now notice in the directions here it says find F of G of X and also G of F of X if they exist. Then we're going to state the domain and the range for each composed function. So after you finish making the composition function, that's called the composed function. We have two functions here, f of x, that equals x squared plus two, and then we have g of x, which equals x minus six. All right, let's start with f of g of x. Again, if you, if you could also write it like this, They mean the same thing. And so what this is really saying is that G is the input value. So we're going to insert G into X in F. So when you, when you, just like when we evaluated any function, we always replace the variable. We're going to do the same thing. Remember, f and g are just names of the functions. They are not variables in this case. They are the name of the function. The variable in both cases are x because I can see the f of x, which means there's a function written in x, 
g of x, a function written in x. Okay. So here's what this means, really. We're taking g of x, which is x minus 6. And we are going to insert it into f. Well, where do I replace, what do I replace in f? I replace the x. Okay. So that x minus 6 goes in place of x. In reality, what I have here Another way to write this is this is f of g of x, but g of x equals x minus 6. So we're really just inserting x minus 6 into f. So here's what that would look like. Wherever there was an x in f, we replace it with x minus 6. In this case, there was only one x in f of x, so I only have to replace it in one place. Now, I want you to finish that. This is the Batman meme. Don't mess this up. x minus 6 squared does not equal x squared plus 36. Oh, I'm so stupid. Remember, you kind of have to foil it out if you forgot about the shortcut. If you forgot the shortcut, you actually have to write it out and foil it out. Okay? Again, it does not equal x squared minus 36. There's that middle term. And if you remember the shortcut, it's the, square this, times these together, times 2, square that. So that's why it becomes x squared minus 12x plus 36. Then I can add the 36 and the 2. And so that is f of g of x x squared minus 12x plus 38. Now, we have one other thing that we need to do. We have to find the domain and the range. And the, the thing that's important here when you're looking for the domain is you're trying to find values of x that will create a problem for us, right? And the kinds of problems that I'm talking about will be when you have a fraction and you have an x in a denominator. Because the kinds of problems you have with fractions is if the fraction has a denominator that equals zero because you can't divide by zero. Now, obviously in this problem, there are no fractions. So there's no way to have a denominator that is equal to zero, which means there is no problem here. Okay, We have no problems with x, piece of cake, which means if I can plug anything in for x, what is the domain? All real numbers. All real numbers, that is correct. So my domain is all real numbers. Is it always all real numbers? No, it's not always all real numbers. If you have a variable in a denominator, then you're going to have to exclude certain values to ensure that the denominator does not ever equal zero. Also sometimes known as restricted values. The range for this problem is a little trickier. And while we could look at this, and try to figure out what the range would be. It's actually easier to look up here and use this. Because I want to talk about and I want to focus on this. That entire group squared. What is the lowest possible value that you could get? Don't answer it. Just think about it. What is the lowest possible value you could get for what I have highlighted in green, think about that. The lowest possible value that you can get. When you think you know, raise your hand. The lowest possible value you can get out of what I've highlighted in green, the quantity x minus 6 squared. When you think you know, raise your hand. Okay, let's focus on something else. Let's focus on the squared part. What does squaring a number get you? The result will always be what kind of number? Positive. Okay, 
So let's think back again. What is the lowest possible value I can get for something squared? Zero. Zero. So six. I can't get, no, no the, the whole thing, the lowest possible value I can get is zero. You can never get a negative out of it, right? We just agreed that when you square a number, it's positive. Or it could be zero. So if the lowest possible value here is zero, what is the lowest possible value for the whole thing? Two. Two. So the lowest possible value that I can get for f of g of x because of this is 2. Can you get numbers no. less than 2? No. 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 no, you cannot. Can you get numbers bigger than 2? Nope. Yes. Sure, because this number can be bigger than 0. It just can't be less than 0. That would make it negative. So what, what numbers are we actually talking about for the range? We're talking about anything... Greater than or equal to. equal to 2. That's how we find the range for f of g of x. Now notice the notation here. It's not y. It's f of g of x. f of g of x has to be greater than or equal to 2 for the range. The range will sometimes be tricky. You'll want to look at your final answer. Sometimes it's worth investigating someplace else to give you a better lead on where to find the range. And so here, it's going to be hard to look at this and go, oh, yeah, greater than or equal to 2. It's never going to be. But here, if you explore this and you notice the something squared, it can only ever be as low as 0 and bigger. That's where I came up with that. All right, so that's just halfway done for one problem. All we found was f of g of x in its domain and range. Now we got to go the other way. we got to find g of f of x. So we we're just flipping it all around. Now the input value is f. Again, keep in mind this means g of f of x. f of x is the input value. Okay, so now whatever f is goes into g wherever there's an x. So we're talking about this. Uh, x squared plus 2, that's f. It goes in everywhere there's an x in g. So, here's where we're at. Just replace the x with x squared plus 2. That whole function is the input value. What purpose are these parentheses serving? Or are they serving a purpose? Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, there's a 1. There's no, no, there's no negatives. There's no, no number in front. So we really don't need the parentheses there. Okay. And so it's just x squared plus 2 minus 6, which is x squared minus 4. But that's a difference of squares, though, right? It is a difference of squares, but we don't need to factor it. It's okay. We can just leave it like that. All right. Questions on that so far? We're almost done. We just need to find domain and range, and we're done. Any values for x going to be a problem here? Can I plug in anything? What should you look for to decide that? Fraction. A fraction. Is there a fraction here? Nope. No. So then x, what is the domain? All real, numbers. All real numbers. Okay. Now in this case, I can actually look at my final answer to determine the range. Because I have a squared value. What is the smallest possible value for x squared? Zero. Zero. So what is the smallest possible value for g of f of x? <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and write the range inequality. Let's see, let's find out if you get it right. Here it is. G of f of x is greater than or equal to negative 4. How many had that? Very good. Okay. Any questions?